It's everywhere. Mixing and matching everything. From fashion and music to food and families, finding the perfect blend that suits your needs and wants can be challenging. As the nation's population explodes, it's becoming more difficult to define any one person as a single particular ethnicity. I think for so long our world has always been set on raising sort of marrying within your own culture and kind of this sense of nationalism and we've kind of with the formation of you know the United States I think we've kind of gone away from that that European style of nationalism and have kind of just developed this idea of multiculture and that's what you have here you have a melting pot of different cultures so how could you not expect them to at some point come together and mate as more families come to America, assimilating into the new nation can be problematic, especially if your new neighborhood is a place where people like you are hard to find. This can create tension between generations when looking to date, marry, and mate. I did grow up kind of that didn't agree with it. You know, my parents are always like, oh, you should marry Puerto Rican, you should be with someone that's Puerto Rican, but, you know, they were raised in that type of area that that's what it was. And living in Puerto Rico, that's all that was there, so... They kind of don't see where I'm coming from, but they're kind of coming around. And that coming around can mean when a first-generation child is raised and educated in America, their family's older cultural heritage can fade away. I don't know my culture, and I know my boyfriend right now doesn't know my culture. And so they, they did want me to be with somebody, uh, same race and everything. Um, and I see the beauty that, you know, I see, like, the culture, the, the richness of it all. And to me, living in America, I'm not too whatever about it because I don't live over there, but I understand where they're coming from. Without really trying, Sukuna has adopted American values and traditions. For immigrant communities, these new American values can feel strange, alienating, and in some cases, just plain wrong. Especially when it comes to dating, love, and romance, newly assimilated young people can earn the disapproval of their elders who don't much like these new relationships. I did grow up in uh, a place where that was kind of um, uh, frowned upon and it was like not something that it was it, it was okay it wasn't okay I guess for whatever standards that they were setting but for me I really didn't I didn't really get that part you know like I didn't understand like oh it wasn't you know okay to date a black girl or you know or a Caucasian person like I didn't you know, that's just something I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't get that part. And whether or not the first generation Americans do get these new values, interracial relationships still raise eyebrows and can cause a bit of resistance among conservatives. This can lead to stereotypes and false judgments towards the couple in question. Being in the interracial relationships that I've been in, I have had to deal with people, you know, giving snide remarks, dirty looks, saying things off to the side, hearing things about it later. And, uh, you know, it's, to me, I mean, it's, it's not hurtful to me, but it is very sad because it's somebody's own personal insecurities that they're going to put off on another person and their personal beliefs that they're going to put off on another person when you're in a world that you need to be open-minded, that closed-mindedness just kind of, I don't know, makes me feel bad for the people who actually think like that. What Julian Brodnack seems to say is he likes and appreciates those cultural differences and those outsiders don't even have to come from another country. Since I'm a tattooist, I'm a heavily tattooed person. Oh, you know, I'm different. I'm just different all around. You know, I'm kind of an anomaly, you know, no matter, no matter what culture you put me in. So uh, parents don't tend to like that for their daughters. And that, that's pretty much in every culture. You know, When you take your relationship to the next step and get married and have children with your partner, it can get easier, even if some hardships remain. My husband is Samoan and Australian, and um, our upbringings were completely different. So it's always been a constant struggle, a constant battle. We still haven't even baptized our kids because we don't know what religion. Despite these challenges and struggles, many couples continue to find joy and satisfaction when dating across the line. Dating outside of my culture is more of a privilege because it's not something that was allowed before. I believe in mixing it up, for lack of better terms. The joys that I find in a mixed relationship is that 
I'm able to learn another culture and try to grow more and not be so close-minded. Like I have to always remember that everyone is not like me, you know, and it's that way for a reason. You have to keep growing and learning and even though like he may be raised a certain way and that's not what I'm accustomed to, it's just we have to find a common ground, a middle ground, you know, and just work from it and just try to be on the same page. Even with controversy, couples continue to follow their hearts. In America, we have a wide range of cultures, which can sometimes, in some places, among some people, reduce racism. With all this blending and mixing, it gives hope to those who aspire to live in a colorblind and accepting society where all people of all colors and backgrounds have the freedom to live, love, and long for a happy future. From Cal State LA, I'm Nicole Fetter, reporting for Eagle Eye Views, Mixing It Up, Love and Romance Across the Line.